So first of all, we're going to talk about the difference of two squares. So difference of two squares is just like it sounds. It's difference, meaning you're subtracting two perfect squares. Okay, so when you factor it, you can see that you're taking the square root of a squared, which is a, and the square root of b squared, which is b. One of these you're adding and one you're subtracting. And the reason this works is because the inner product, see ab, and the outer product, negative ab, those cancel one another out. That's why you don't have a middle term here. Now the second one we're going to be dealing with is the perfect square trinomial and the way to factor those. And the way to recognize uh, perfect square trinomials is that you can see that this is a perfect square because a times itself, right, is a squared. And then this is a perfect square because b times itself. But what you're checking is that the middle term is a times b times 2, okay? Now the other thing to pay attention to is that at this middle term, if you're adding, then this is going to be a plus b the quantity squared. Whereas if you're subtracting, it's going to be a minus b, the quantity squared. Let's go through some examples so you can see how to do these. So x squared minus 25, we can see that this is a perfect square minus a perfect square. So when we factor it, it's going to be x plus 5, x minus 5. So I just took the square root of 25, that's 5. I took the square root of x squared, that's x. One you're adding, one you're subtracting. The nice thing about factoring is you can always multiply all this out, okay, either by using the distributive property twice or some students like the FOIL method, and you'll see that you get back the original. Okay, let's look at the next one, 4x squared minus 9. Again, notice this is a perfect square. 2x times itself gives you 4x squared. 9 is a perfect square because you can see 3 and 3, and then we're going to make one of these positive, one negative, because you can see what happens. 6x and negative 6x is 0, which is why we don't have a middle term. We just have a first and a last. Going over to the perfect square trinomials now, when you notice that this first term is a perfect square, see 4x times itself, and this is a perfect square, 1 times itself, all you have to do is take 4x times 1 doubled, make sure it matches this middle term. So 4x times 1 is 4x doubled as 8x. So when we factor this, it's going to be 4x and 1. See, I'm getting these numbers from here. And then because we're subtracting, this is going to be minus squared. Now again, if you want to check your work, you know, it's good to do this in the very beginning just to see why this is working the way it does. But when we distribute, we get 16x squared. So there's our 16x squared. We get the negative 4x, okay, and another negative 4x, which adds up to negative 8x. So that's why I said 4x times 1 doubled is 8x, right, the middle term, or the 2ab term. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. There's our perfect square there. So you can see how it works. Now let's look at this last example. Again, notice that x squared is a perfect square, x. 9 is a perfect square, because 3. 3 times x doubled, that's our middle term, 6x. So when we factor this, it's going to be x plus 3, the quantity squared. And again, notice we're using plus here, because this was positive. This one, it was minus. You can see we're using a minus sign there. So these are definitely important ones to understand, these two formulas, when you're learning factoring. I'll have a link to... Uh, a whole series I did talking about all different types of factoring. If you're interested, you can check that out. But otherwise, subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.